Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an airline pilot and today we are going to start with the tutorial series for the Microsoft ATR 72600 and 42600 developed by Hans Hartmann in Microsoft Flight Simulator. In this video we are going to deal with the preliminary cockpit preparation. So basically we are going to prepare the cockpit but we are not going to run the FMC setup because the FMC is basically a topic for its own video. Okay, as always, this tutorial is going to be split into several parts so that it is easier accessible for everybody. All right, let's start straight up. Unfortunately, we do not have a load manager at the time of this recording, so we will have to use the Flight Simulator internal panels. So, we go ahead to the weight and balance and we simply set whatever we need and for a short flight like this let's take 35% of fuel, 70% payload, that does look quite good to me. Obviously I did calculate an operational flight plan in the background but um, I hope to update this with a proper load manager tutorial by the time that it comes out. Anyway, for now that is going to be it, so we can take a seat on the captain's seat of our ATR. I am going to use the ground power which we are connecting right now through the aircraft menu and let's also go ahead and open the main door and put the tail prop in place. So that's the setup, other than that the airplane is fully in a cold and dark setup from which we are going to start this. Alright, so we're going to start by checking that the circuit breakers are all in, which they are at the moment, and then we go down to the pedestal, which is where the action really starts. Make sure the power levers number 1 and 2 are in the ground idle detent, the gust lock is engaged, condition levers 1 and 2 are in the fuel shut off position, the flap lever is set to match our actual flaps, which is 0 at the moment, landing gear lever is down, the EECs are in, those are up here, and this is what it would look like, so you really need to be careful looking at those to make sure that they are in the um, depressed in position. Go up to the overhead panel, we got the wiper on the captain's side, the wiper on the FO side, both are switched off. And with this done, we can now switch on our battery. With the battery on, we'll give the plane a short moment to start powering up. It will start with the display units number 2 and 4, which is this one and this one, and the FMC. All right. So from here on, check that we have the emergency um, essential buzz arrows illuminated and check that the standby instruments do have power, which they do. Okay, the avionics are running their self-tests right now and while that is ongoing, we just have to wait for a little bit until they are done so that we can check if there is any warning shown that would prevent us from applying power to the aircraft. So here they are. We quickly go over the failures that are showing. Obviously we've got the buses and um, we've got the AC wild, fuel feed low pressure, hydraulic low pressure, electric inverters. Okay, that all makes sense. Nothing to prevent us from powering the airplane up any further. So we go ahead and switch on the external power unit, which as you can see nicely lights up the remainder of our airplane. Now, the avionics in the ATR are mostly made by Thales, which is the same manufacturer as the avionics that Airbus uses. And for that reason, you will recall that a lot of stuff is somewhat similar to an Airbus in this airplane. And that includes, amongst others, the dark flight deck philosophy. In other words, we've got a lot of bright lights on our overhead panel right now, and with the exception of the probe heats and the fuel pumps, we are going to turn off any of those white lights. So that is the first thing that we're going to do. We've got the fuel pumps down here which are going to remain off. Apart from that we are going to extinguish any white lights. So the DC generators can come on. Those are the probe heats, we don't touch them yet. Window heat, AC wild generators, hydraulic pumps, crew oxygen and with that we have any white light extinguished as we can see. So now we are going to start with the actual system checks. And this follows a standard scan flow pattern, which basically goes like this. We have the overhead panel divided in four different parts, as we can see over here, 
and we are going to start bottom to top. So we are going to start with the um, bottom over here, go up to the top, then we start in the second row, we go once again bottom to top, third row, bottom to top, fourth row, bottom to top. Then we start at the uh, lower pedestal and we once again go from here bottom to top until we end up over here and then we go over to the left side on the captain's position and the right side on the first officer's position. So that is the standard scan flow that we are going to follow during our setup. So let's start with the overhead panel. We can leave the lights as desired. We are going to check the fuel system. So turn on the left fuel pump, observe the fuel feed low pressure light going off. Turn on the cross feed, observe the line going and the right side low pressure light going off, which indicates that the fuel is flowing. And we can quickly verify this on the fuel page as well, as we can see down here. The left side is running, the cross feed is opened, and the right side is powered as well. Now we are going to switch the cross feed back off, observe the low pressure light, and run the right hand fuel pump. And again, we get pressure on the right side of the system, which we can verify on the system display down here as well. Okay, now we're going to go further to the top, run the uh, switching test on the doors, go further up, we observe the landing gear indicators in green, the TLU is in the guarded position and the MFC switches are all on. Now we come up to the engine fire test for the left engine, so we run the squip test, observe both white lights. Now we're going to run the fault test and observe the fault lights illuminated, and now we're going to run the fire test and observe the engine fire switch illuminated and listen to the warning sound. Normally we would also have a look down here to verify the correct indications, however due to ergonomics of Microsoft Flight Simulator I'm going to squip over that. Next up, the lights. Obviously the beacon should be off, I don't know why it is on in the standard panel state, and so we only have the nav lights illuminated. Next up we have our propeller brake, which we can set. And in order to do that, we have to press the um, hydraulic auxiliary pump switch. And when that is pressed, we can continue ahead and make sure to put the um, propeller brake into the on position like this and observe the Cyan propeller brake light. The engine starts, which is off. The, um, Electrical panel, we basically check that we have no cautions over there except for the fault lights on the generators. And we go over the battery selector, which we can see is in the neutral position like this. But we also check the emergency position. Going on to the next panel then, we have the emergency lights, which we are going to arm. And as soon as refueling is complete, we can switch on the fasten seatbelt and the no electronic device sign. We go further up and check that all of our indications are showing good. So basically nothing on the um, anti-icing panel right now. And since we don't have bleed air, we get the fault light down here, which is expected. And then we go further up. We do not normally use the external power on the AC wild electrical power panel. That is primarily a maintenance function, which we are not going to touch. And we go further up. Hydraulic panel is showing the low pressure lights, which does make sense. Going on from the air conditioning, we are going to test the enunciator lights. So let's quickly go back to the captain's seat, observe that all the lights are working, and we are going to check the same in the rest of the cockpit, like this. Okay, so the lights are working. We see a couple of fault lights on the bleed panel, which does make sense since we don't have any engines running. Cabin temperature, a nice 20 degrees centigrade, and the cabin temperature selectors are just left of the 12 o'clock position and finally we go up check the oxygen supply make sure that we do have a decent amount of pressure in here as well and do the fire test on the remaining engine like this okay from here we can now go down to the pedestal and we'll carry out the atp cs test so for that, have a look at the engine panel at first. We can see our torque is zero. The rotation of the uh, propellers are zero as well. And obviously the engines are shut off. Now, as we are about to run this, putting it into the arm position, you will see that this is basically simulating engines running at more than 60% torque. And now we are going to simulate an engine failure like this. 
observe the Optra method, engine one flame out, auto feather, and the um, zero torque indication. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other end side. So armed, as we can see, and then we go into the engine two position. And once again, it's, it's simulating a failure of the engine number two. It automatically shows the associated electronic checklist. And that is basically the um, ATP CS test completed. Next up, we are going to check that all the trims are working. Check the uh, standby pitch that was nose up, you know, uh, sorry, nose down trim, as we can see on the display. Then we're going to go into the nose up position. And as we can see, we've now trimmed up a little bit. Standby pitch trim is working, got it again. And we're going to do the same for the rudder and for the ailerons. However, personally, in the flight simulator, I do not really like those because it is pretty hard to center them out again. So I'm just going to leave it. But if you want to be absolutely correct, you're going to run those trim tests as well by simply moving it into a direction, looking into the indicator, observe that it is working, and that's it. So from here on, we are going further forward on the panel. We've already checked the uh, pedestal. So this leads us to the main panel. We're going to run the ice test. So press and hold the test button. We get the icing caution up here and the icing light. We're going to do the same on the APM test. Press it, hold it. You're going to get a whole bunch of uh, error messages over here. You see the fault light and that's it. Make sure the propeller electronic controls are in. The boost button is in. Power management is set to take off. All right. Next up, we check the cabin pressure panel, make sure that the source selector is uh, not illuminated so that the FMS is providing the landing field elevation and all the switches are basically not illuminated. And that is pretty much it on this part of the cockpit. We're not going to touch the autopilot panel yet, so we can move on to the left. Standby compass is stowed. Now we can do the GPWS test. Terrain awareness. Test. Start. Terrain awareness. System test. Terrain awareness. Test complete. And that's it. And going down to the side panel, we set the speed target into automatic. However, there's nothing showing yet since we haven't programmed the FMC yet. Okay, on the left hand side, pretty much nothing you need to do down here. So that is already it completed. Finally, We can see that the oxygen mask is also working, the nose wheel steering is guarded, and that is already it. So that is our preliminary cockpit preparation complete. From here on, we are going to move into the next tutorial, which is going to be the FMC setup. I hope you found this one interesting. If you did, then do let me know in the comments below. As always, if you like what I'm doing, I would appreciate if you would like the video, comment and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And if you really appreciate what I'm doing, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me a Coffee link in the video description below. Or I would be very happy to welcome you as a channel member, which is going to give you exclusive early access to lots of new videos before they are released for anyone else. Thank you for watching, and I'm looking forward to see you all again very soon.